and welcome to my channel cake. I'm your hostess Suzanne. Today we're going to make this cute Cookie Monster smash cake. If you want to know how I did it, just keep watching. Let's go ahead and get started with our Cookie Monster smash cake. I have a turntable, a non-stick pad, and I also have an 8 inch cake board. I'll put that in the center of my turntable. I have two 6 inch vanilla cakes. I just took them out of the freezer about 20 minutes ago. As I like to freeze my cake layers before I dish them, I like them a little bit firm. Let's go ahead and put a dollop of buttercream on this cake board. That just ensures the cake doesn't move around on the cake board. Let's go ahead and put our six inch vanilla cake here centered onto the eight inch cake board. I do want a little bit of room here because this is Cookie Monster. He'll have cookies and hair all over the place. <laughs> go ahead and give him a squish, squish, jiggle, jiggle down. Make sure he is attached to the cake board. Let's go ahead and take some of our blue American buttercream. I will link the video for my American buttercream down in the description box below. I just used some royal blue gel food coloring. Let's go ahead and put a little bit up there on the middle. Okay, let's go ahead and take the second layer, and it's the last layer of this little smash cake. And you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna turn this puppy upside down, and you know why? Because the bottom is flatter than the top. Let's go ahead and do that now. Squish, squish, jiggle, jiggle. Make sure it's nice and straight on there. Jiggle, jiggle, jiggle. Okay, let's go ahead. We're gonna go ahead and stick this puppy in the freezer for about 15 minutes. And while she's in the freezer, we're gonna make the eyeballs for Cookie Monster. I'm going to leave my glasses on for this so I can see what I'm doing. I apologize, you're not able to see my eyes very well. <laughs> Go ahead and get some gloves on because I will be working with some black food gel coloring and I don't want my skin to be all dyed black. I have some Wilton's Decorator's Preferred Fondant here. This first chunk, I'm gonna divide it in half after I massage it and gets it nice and soft. I'm just gonna put some powder in this fondant that will harden it. It's not necessary, I just want it to keep its shape. And I just put a little bit, and I will show you what I'm using here. It's the cheaper version of the Tylos powder I was told. You just want to massage it in. I like to pull it and twist it and fold it onto itself. I think I got that powder pretty well mixed up in there. Go ahead and roll it up to a little sausage. I'm just doing that so I can visually see when I cut it in half, that I have about half. If I was being super perfectionist, I would get my scale out. I'm not worried about Cookie Monster's eyes being one slightly larger than the other. Okay, let's go ahead and cut in half. And this is gonna be the size of his eyes. I like the fact that Cookie Monster has large googly eyes. <laughs> okay, let's make him balls. take a little bit more fondant and dye it black to make the pupils. I'm just gonna put a little bit of shortening here on my prep table. That will ensure it doesn't stain it, the black food coloring, when I press it down here to work on it. That looks good there. Let's go ahead and take a little bit of this. I'm just flattening it out so I put a little bit of the gel food coloring. I just have the black Amera color, and it's called Super Black. Super Black! Maybe that was enough. Let's put a little dot there. Go ahead and mix that black gel food coloring into our small amount of fondant. Yeah, that looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and just take a rolling pin here just to get it nice and flat. I'm just using the back side of a tip, a piping tip, and I have my extra large one here and I just have a large one here. I think I'm gonna go with the extra large. And then sticking it down on that fondant and twisting it ever so slightly, and then pull up that excess. And there's two pupils, I think they look super cute. Okay, now that we have filled our cake, we've made the cute googly eyes for our Cookie Monster. Let's go ahead and carve out the, the head of Cookie Monster. And we're gonna give him a nice big open mouth. And by doing that, I'm just taking my knife, my serrated knife, and going down at an angle. And then slightly up, meeting the other cut. There we go. Okay, now that we have our big chunk out here, I'm gonna go ahead and trim off a little bit of the corners to make the head a little bit more rounded. It's not really that necessary because we're gonna be using the grass tip and we can create the height around the top of the head. I wanna give it a little head start here. Just making the top a little rounded. 
by shaving off a little bit of the top corner here. Not a whole lot. Okay, now that we cleaned up a little bit, let's go ahead and give our Cookie Monster a crumb coat. A crumb coat is just a thin layer of frosting to seal in those crumbs so we don't get crumbs in our final coat. I want to wipe off my offset spatula before I go back into my final frosting for a second dip. We don't want to contaminate our frosting. Let's go ahead and do that now. And again, it's just a thin coat, so it doesn't have to be pretty at this point. Just has to cover all of the cake. We want to fill in the gaps where the layers meet. Make a nice flat side. Okay, I think he looks pretty cute so far. I'm gonna stick him back in the freezer for a good 15 minutes and I'll be right back in one second. <laughs> I think our Cookie Monster cake is coming along so great. It's time to give Cookie Monster his fur. I have a Wilton's large decorator back here with the Wilton grass tip, which is a 233. And I have filled this with some American buttercream. I will link my video in the description box below on how to make this buttercream. And I have colored it with royal blue gel food coloring. And basically, and in true Suzanne fashion, I have overfilled my bag, which makes it a little bit more difficult to work with. It's a toss up. Do I refill my bag more often or do I take a few minutes of the bag being too full? <laughs> I choose the latter of the two most often. <laughs> Let's go ahead and give Cookie Monster his fur. I like to start at the bottom and work my way up. We're gonna squeeze and however long you want his fur to be. And you just let go like that. And it's okay if his fur is longer in some areas than in others. Like that, I think it's starting out super cute so far. You want to get your tip near to the cake, not, you don't have to put it on the cake itself, but just close enough to where this frosting will adhere to the crumb coat. Squeeze and release and pull out, squeeze and release and pull out. Just like that. Again, you guys, if I can do this, you guys can do this, right? <laughs> Just a few tools and a little bit of patience. Okay, I think he's looking pretty cute so far. I think I'm gonna build up a little bit on his head to make his head a little bit more rounded. I did carve off the sides at the beginning of the video to help out with that effect. Let's go ahead and build him up now. Just put a little dollop here on top and spread it around. We just want it to be a gradual dome on top of his head. I think that helps out a little bit, creating more of a round shape to his head. Let's go ahead and continue piping this fur. And it's just squeeze and release and pull out. If you're new to my channel, thank you so much for joining me today on this Cookie Monster tutorial. Please consider subscribing. It is quick, easy, and most importantly, it is free. If you're a return subscriber watching another one of my videos, thank you so much. It means the world to me. It really does. If you like this video, hit that thumbs up. If you like to be notified every time I upload a video, hit that bell. It's called the notifications bell. It will send you an email every single time I upload a video. Let's go ahead and continue with this Cookie Monster Smash Cake for sweet little boy's first birthday. You do want to wipe off your tip every once in a while. It will get a little bit dirty. And the fur won't look as nice and crisp if there's stuff in the way. This cookie monster is so cute. 
The Cookie Monster! Closing that gap big time here. Feel like we're at the end of the race. I can see the finish line. <laughs> And you want to be careful not to make a loop. Sometimes your hand gets cramped, you get tired, and it's like, oh, just want to get this done. You do want to release and create that ending of the, the fur, the frosting. <laughs> Unless you want to make a poodle, then you just keep it going, right? We're at the ending here at about the size of a silver dollar left in the middle here. Almost done. Couple more. We're almost at the finish line. I can feel it. Oh. Da da da. Let me look at him. He is. He is incredibly cute. If I can say so myself. I like him a lot. And I like the fact that I shaved off the sides a little bit and added a little bit of frosting on the top to add some height for the, the head shape, not just a square. He's not Frankenstein for Pete's sake. <laughs> okay, let's go ahead and put our eyes on now. And I think we're going to make his eyes googly, not just straight forward. I think they're looking pretty cute. You can see what size I made them. That size of a, between a golf ball and a tennis ball, somewhere in there. Here we go. Sit him just like that. You pretty much have one shot on this. <laughs> you don't really want your fondant getting the blue frosting all over it. So take your time and position it the way you want it. I think he's looking pretty cute. What do you guys think? I like him. His eyes are all wonky. And in this case, wonky's good. <laughs> cookie Monster is not complete without the cookies. We know that. So Cookie Monster has some cookies. Went ahead and got some Chips Ahoy cookies. Let's go ahead and put a little bit of our fresh frosting in there so the cookies will adhere to it a little bit better. Just be careful you don't mess up your fur. Let's see here. Again, no right or wrong way to do this. I think we're just gonna put several in there. <laughs> After all, he is the cookie monster. I went ahead and broke one in half so it looks like it's more in his mouth. There we go, I like that. And, and I'm gonna go ahead and put a little bit of frosting on the back side of this one here. Build him up a little bit. There we go. And the reason I did that is because I'm going to stick him right between these other two and he wouldn't have any frosting to adhere to. So this way I'm making sure he has something to stick onto. And we're going to slide him in there. And we're not going to put him right in the center. We're going to make it a little bit over to the side. I think that looks super cute. I think I'm going to put a little one in there too. Went ahead and got the minis as well. When is enough cookies enough? <laughs> Go ahead and put a little bit on the back side of the mini one. And I'm gonna position it between these two right here. Slide him in there. I think that looks adorable. What do you guys think? I think our Cookie Monster Smash Cake has turned out super cute. I think of a special little one-year-old boy who's gonna love smashing into this at his photo shoot today. I'm having a great day. I hope you are as well. Until next time, make it a great day. Now this is fun. This is like watching paint dry, I'm sure. <laughs> and I just used some royal boot. Royal boot. An eight inch. Oops. 
Okay, let's go ahead and give Cookie Monster her, her. That's a wrap.